Hey guys, what's going on out there? This is uh, Fade again, and uh, I did have Sammy uh, Prescott here, and uh, <laughs> we are doing it. We're doing the doggone thing, and he's just going to explain just some small things to you guys real quickly. We'll cut out a little bit here and there, and cut back, and uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear, and then I'll kind of patch some of the video together and uh, break it down, uh, depending on what I see. Will be you guys could take advantage of looking at and stuff you may understand and stuff you may not understand so uh without further ado here's sammy hey guys so what i'm doing right now is i'm setting up all my equipment to actually do the calibration um what i'm going to be doing for steve or fade to black <laughs> is i'm going to um i'm going to be targeting uh alternate white point um first what we're going to do is i'm going to plug in a few different alternate white points so he can see which one he likes best um we're going to he was using DNICE's prior, um, so we're gonna plug that in, let him take a look at a little bit of content, see how much he likes it, also look at just straight white, how it handles white. Um, then we're gonna do one of my customs uh, white points. We're going to put in D65, we're gonna put in Judd Average, and then we're probably gonna put in uh, maybe one other custom white point from a friend. Um, see which one he likes better, see how it affects skin tone, see how it affects white. Uh, once we do that, we're going to then use that white point for the basis of the calibration. Um, it will then be set up so that Custom Pro Expert 1 is essentially going to be his reference mode. Custom Pro uh, 2, Expert 2, is going to be used for more of a, a day mode as well as HDR. And then for Dolby, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Warm, um, which is going to have uh, all, a white point that takes into account an offset that Dolby Dark automatically applies. So Dolby Dark automatically applies an offset um, when used. So if I were to put in the same white point I'm using for everything else, it's gonna add that offset, which is gonna effectively make it not look like everything else. So what we have to do is we have to take into account that offset, subtract the offset from the white point, make that the new target for warm, assign that to Dolby Dark, which will then make it target the white point that I want. Um, so that's effectively what we're going to be doing today. Um, shouldn't take too long, um, but first we do want to get the white point that he likes first, um, cement it in stone, and then we can actually target everything from there. Yep, so that's how we're starting, guys, and uh, we'll have a little bit more information as we go along. I'm just going to explain a little bit about uh, the equipment, and what I'll do is I'll kind of, you know, go over to the equipment, and as he's explaining, so excuse me about the shaky cam here, guys. So this okay. right here is something All very right. nice. So uh, the equipment that I use is made by Colorimetry Research. Uh, this is a CR250. This is a spectral radiometer. Um, very, very, very accurate. Um, the only downside is that spectral radiometers are slower. This is a colorimeter. Uh, this is a CR100, also by Colorimetry Research. Extremely fast. Um, it's not that this is incredibly una inaccurate, just due to this is, is reference equipment, so this is very accurate, but I always want to increase the accuracy level of this. So what we do, so use a colorimetry research CR250 spectral radiometer to create a profile of the television. Once the profile is created, I then use it as an offset to apply to the colorimeter. So it, it increases the accuracy, but I also get the benefit of the speed. And mm -hmm. then for... Can you explain this real quickly? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a couple of friends that were looking at some of these for, I think, about three or 400 bucks, maybe 600 some. Uh, what's the major difference of, you know, something like this versus that? Okay, so those are generally I1 Display 3s. Um, they are pretty, they're pretty fast. Um, they have very bad low light reading capability. Um, and generally they are accurate to the third decimal point. So like 0 .00, uh, say four, for instance, mm -hmm. um, at a hundred nits. Where this is accurate down to roughly the fourth decimal point at 0 0.3 nits. So I'm sorry, 0 0.3 nits. So I'm at the lowest levels of black. So what's going to effectively happen is if they were reading like darker patches, they're going to get a varying degree of errors and they're not going to be repeatable. So they can measure, say, something that's very dark, like something that's like five nits, 
and they're going to get vastly different readings each time. Where mine, I'm going to get effectively the same reading um, down to uh, below the fourth decimal point. Um, so this is highly repeatable, very accurate. It's not going to degrade over time. Everything's all glass and aluminum, where theirs is essentially plastic and various filters um, that are not glass. <laughs> okay. All right. You got, you, you, everybody heard that? And uh, what do you got over here? So this is my pattern generator. So this is the Meridio 7 8K version. So I can send uh, 8K signals. I can send 4K120. It is HDMI 2.1. This effectively has all the patterns that I need on here for, uh, let's see, pattern selection. So I can go like, say, I have some spheres and mounts and stuff on here, right? So if I want to test motion, which for like, is Sarah on a hammock, uh, it'll come up in just a second. So I, I can test motion, for instance, at 24p, I can put it at 30p, I can put it at 60p. Um, I have various patterns for HDR, I have them for Dolby Vision, I can load on my own custom ones. Um, and this essentially, will, I connect it to my laptop and then I can decide what pattern that I want to send at any given time. Um, or I could just do it all manually from the unit itself. Hmm. Okay. So these are, this is all effectively reference equipment. The spectra radiometer is roughly uh, 7,400 before tax. Uh, the colorimeter is roughly about 6,400 before tax. Uh, this right here is about 6K. Um, wow, okay. And then for software, I do have Calman Ultimate, but I also use Color Space, Color Space HTP. Okay. So Color Space HTP um, is about $2,400, I believe. I can't really remember right off the top of my head. Um, and then Calman Ultimate is, if I recall correctly, I want to say around $3,400. Um, so, I mean, roughly, I'm using close to you know, 20 grand, a little over 20 grand worth of equipment to when I do calibrations. All right. Yeah, so 20, 20 grand will get you guys the ultimate calibration from Sammy Prescott, and uh, we'll click back with some more information. Quickly, guys, the reason Sony is so great with motion, uh, I'm not going to explain it to you, of course. I'm going to let Sammy do the, the talking here. So one of the reasons that Sony's are so good with motion is because even though I turned off all of their uh, motion processing right now, effectively for the calibration purposes, um, if I send it a 24p signal, so you know we know film is shot at 24 hertz, right? So we're not shot at 24 hertz, but it's played back, displayed at 24 hertz. Um, anytime you send a Sony that signal, what it does, if I measure the refresh rate of the panel, it comes back at 95.7 something hertz. So essentially it's, even though everything else is turned off for film, and we know it is a native 120 hertz panel, it will send it um, and refresh the panel at 96 hertz. That's something that the old Panasonic's did, and I believe also Kuro's, um, which is why Sony has such great motion. In order for it to become 120 hertz when I actually measure the panel, it has to be a 60 uh, hertz signal. So that's one of the reasons that Sony is so good 